channel uh today's a little different today we did have a fishing downtown pittsburgh video planned which i'm still gonna do it's just as you can see the sun is high in the sky i was supposed to meet my man dave at five at the ramp uh, i got off work late last night which isn't the reason why i was late but i got everything done and for once i was done prepping the boat and everything uh, a little early and i had like an hour and a half i said let me lay my head down before you knew it, it was 8 o'clock. So, big shout out to my man, Dave. Sorry, I'm super sorry. He knows I'm going to make it up to him. He ended up being able to go to work today. But I know it sucks because we, we were supposed to be on the boat fishing today. And I've never, ever stood somebody up when it came to fishing. Uh, I just think I tried to go a little too hard with without any sleep. And I freaking passed out. Slept through. Thank God my work alarm was still set. Because I wouldn't even have woke up at 8 if that didn't happen. Yeah, I know it's the worst time to go out fishing. But today is my only day. We're going to go hit the Mon River down in the south side. Because today, guys, we're going to go fish downtown Pittsburgh. I don't think... I know I definitely didn't. But I think uh, Pittsburgh gets overlooked a lot. That Man, we have three rivers. Well, two that turn into one right downtown we could possibly have the best fishing city if you may uh, i know there's other cities out there but come on man who has three natural rivers our city was built on them so we definitely have to go check them out i need to catch some smallies and we need to get some good b-roll and all that from downtown pittsburgh because that's what we repping today bnb has always been 412 even though i would love to move to florida texas alabama any one of those but hey you know what it is we from the berg baby or as i like to say the pits yeah we ain't, i ain't from the berg i'm from the pits of the city you heard me and we're getting climbed out but so we're gonna go out and rep i don't know i'm just rambling guys i know i look terrible i look homeless i got a raggedy t-shirt on we're gonna go in and change because we just got everything ready we got the rods thrown in i got the Check this out. We use freaking Beatrice so much, I had to switch out my trolling motor pedal. Yeah, I know it's a little different. This is how you could turn your regular trolling motor into a foot pedal one. So we had to switch that out because I wore the first one out. I have to, I had to fix the plug. I got to get new trailer lights. This would be my fourth or fifth set. I don't know what it is. But yeah, that none of that stuff is neither here nor there. I've been jabbering too long. But guys, I'm going to finish getting ready. It's about nine nine thirty we are gonna shoot over get on the water and see if we can catch y'all a nice fat pittsburgh smart i can't Ooh, this intro i might have to reshoot this intro i'm looking yeah. but you know what it is this ain't about fiction this is just what it is man when you in real life when you ain't got time you ain't worried about what you look like you're just trying to get to the water right i don't know i need to start worrying about what i look like <laughs> no more rambling y'all I'm going to go. It's also my wedding anniversary. I've been married five years today. And I almost forgot. And I'm going fishing. That does not look good. But we're going to make sure to cut the day short so we come back and spend some tight time with the wife and the kids. I'm going to go say bye to them, get changed, get packed up. And I will see y'all down at the ramp. Let's go. What's up, fishing and bashing fam? We ain't going to waste too much time. I already rambled at the house. But as you can see, we are at the freaking ramp down here in Southside. It's the Birmingham Bridge. And as you can see, the city's down that way. So 
Um, this stretch, I don't believe is too famous for, you know, smallmouth fishing, but we're gonna see today if we can catch us some downtown Pittsburgh smallies, some freaking Yinzer smallies. That might be the title of today's video. Yinzer freaking smallies. Let's see if we can get on some downtownies. <laughs> Let's go, b, b for life. I'll see you in the water. Get much smaller than that, guys.
guys, as you can see, we're pulling up to our second spot. This big, long concrete wall, actually kind of where it ends, uh, and it turns back into Rocky River Bank. And you guys see me kind of cycling through baits, throwing the jig, the wacky rig, the crankbait. We caught a couple small little fish, but you guys aren't seeing on the on the uh, electronics what I'm seeing and why I'm sticking around this area a little longer is there's a couple big bait balls, two or three, two of them for sure, and there's one kind of deeper. And uh, they're staying within 10 to 20 feet of this wall, and there's some really good marks underneath them, like at least four or five of them, and they're not scattering no matter what I do. So those baits didn't work. Like I said, they're suspended, so I pick up the, the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper, which is an awesome bait, especially around here in the Western PA area, or if you're fishing for smallmouth, really if you're fishing for anything, because it's a awesome, heavily, like heavier than your usual small swim bait, so that's why it works great in the river, but... I, I that's what you guys see and I'm picking that up starting to throw it and I just wish I was prepared for what happens next because I was not so stay tuned also stay tuned for that crankbait because that crankbait does work the rest of this video last thing before we go help support your boy to get uh, to the goal of a thousand subs that's my goal help me reach it let's go back to the video Flip it in, Casey. Why didn't you just flip it in, Case? Why didn't you just flip it in? Oh my god, that was a giant smolly. It was like a three pound smolly, dude. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Damn it, dude. That was a big smolly. Oh, he crushed it, dude. He crushed that thing, dude. Big old smally crushed it. Oh, why didn't I get that fish in? That's gonna haunt me, dude. At first, it felt like a snag. That's how hard he hit. Going the other way, like I couldn't even move. That's how you flashing, big dog. That's how you flashing. Guys, I'm still like sick off that fish. We just need to catch another fish. That's it. Man, who else knows what that saltiness feels like, missing a good fish like that. Especially on a body of water, you don't see many of those. But, as you can see, we switched to the wacky rig to try to maybe see if that fish is still hanging around. We end up hooking another fish, almost getting it to the boat. But, we're just kind of focused on those, those fish that are still there. Even after missing that fish, those big marks are still there, the bait balls are still there. So, I, I decide to switch back to the jig. With doing that, I, I switched to a different rod though. We're going to throw the same jig, but I'm going to switch up the action of the rod to maybe see if that helps us get some fish in the boat. Because, as you see, they like the jig. They're biting the jig. We just got to see if we can get one in the boat. Look at that. Clean them off. Alright. We might get 12. 
Look at him go. It's the first decent fish here and there's a second or third. Let's see they're sitting on bottom, but jig fish. Let's see if we can catch some more. Switching rods did get us a fish in the boat, but we are still missing way too many bites. After that last follow, I think we've gone one for eight uh, at a fish in the boat for eight bites, which is terrible. So, time to bring out the net rig, the old guarantee. We just threw the net rig on this guy. Thank you, sir. Now you're probably wondering why we're keeping these fish, and that has to do with the whole reason behind the video. And part of that reason is we are fishing the very same waters that held the 2005 Bassmaster Classic, very well regarded as the best classic ever. And I got a few clips here to show you why. When I heard Pittsburgh, I thought, you know, rivers, summertime, smallmouth, yeah. This year's classic would not only come down to who succeeded the most. <laughs> Four! Yeah! Yeah! It would also come down to who would struggle the oh. most. Come on, baby, please, God, help me. I'm struggling today, please. Strap in as we take you through the closest, toughest classic in history. God! Oh my God! No, oh my God! No! No, no! I knew that that a, a fishery like that would be super tough, but at the same time, I knew it it, it houses bass. It, it has, harbors a population of fish. So my next thought was, I want to have a really good shot to win this tournament. You know, it's it's a tough fishery. There's smallmouth in there, and it's a river. You know, in an urban setting, which are three things that are right up my alley. Pittsburgh so exceeded my expectations of being a great classic city. First off, they did such a great job to promote it. Everyone knew what we were there for. Pittsburgh took this very, very seriously. They came possibly the greatest city I'd ever been to as far as, it was huge. And I was really intimidated when I first drove in town, but after getting out and I meeting people, these people were nice. I was really impressed when I left Pittsburgh. I had a great time, I enjoyed everybody there. I think I'm a Steelers fan. When you get 10, 15,000 people showing up screaming in the morning like this, if that doesn't get you fired up about your job, you got no blood in your system. So this is cool. I watched Kevin lose a nice one. I felt it for him a little bit, but not really. <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God! It's hard to overcome missed opportunities, especially in a tough event. Because I knew how valuable a one pound keeper would be in that event. Three out of the first four bites. I got a loss. There he is. Come off. Cheryl oh. Swindle, you cannot continue to do All right, hold up a second. This here is probably the biggest reason why this was the best classic ever. Take a look at this final day top six. Every one of these guys is a Hall of Famer in their own right. We have George Cochran, the only man to win a classic and an FLW championship, and he's won two classics. We have Edwin Evers, who's won a classic and a Red Crest. We have Gerald Swindle, bass fishing's favorite son and two-time Angler of the Year. We have Mike Iaconelli, the only angler to ever win at every single adult level. He's won a classic, an Angler of the Year. He's won at the Bass Nation Series, and he's won a Kayak Series event. Insane. We have Kevin 
Kevin Van Dam, regarded as bass fishing's best angler of all time, the GOAT, who has won four classics. He has had seven Angler of the Year awards, and he has won over six and a half million dollars in winnings. How freaking rages, guys. And to top it all off, rest in peace to the god, the furious hog snatcher himself, Aaron Martins, three-time Angler of the Year award winner and four-time Bassmaster Classic runner-up. Guys, can all six of these guys are going at it for the Bassmaster Trophy in Pittsburgh, which is insane, dude. That's probably why this is my favorite classic, and it's probably also why it's considered the best classic ever. Not to mention, five of these six guys are tied. Look how close the weights are. Just absolutely insane, guys. Insane. All right, B&B fam, since we know a lot more about the hardest classic ever, let's get back to the fishing and the whole reason I made this video, which is 17 years later, are the rivers here in Pittsburgh any better than they were back in 2005? Now we know that Kevin Van Dam won that classic. It was the second of his four wins, but believe it or not, out of all three days, he only caught a limit on that final day. And those five fish weighed out. Four pounds, 13 ounces, and Kevin Van Dam moves to the top. Now, my goal today is, can we beat Kevin Van Dam's winning classic bag? A couple things to take into consideration. We don't have a full field of elite competition. All right, check, we know that. There's not all the spectators since it's the classic, making the fishing harder, more boats on the water. Now it is summer, like I said, uh, or if I didn't say, it's almost two weeks to the date 17 years later so time frame weather all that is pretty damn close there was barely any current out here today so all that stuff's on point so those are a couple things we got to take into consideration but i think we can do it i do think the rivers are a lot better they're definitely a lot cleaner than they were back then now we know our goal is anything north of four pounds 13 ounces which i have big faith we can get it done so b and fam, do me a favor, stick around to the end Let's to see go, if we catch those back. five fish and if those five fish outweigh Kevin Van Dam's winning Bassmaster Classic bag. And if you're not a part of the B&B fam, we'd love you to have you. you. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you do. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to hit the like button. that the water line is, I mean, it's dropped a bunch, eight inches, six, eight inches overnight, and there's no current. And what that makes these smallmouth do is not relate to the bottom. They'll just kind of get out and suspend, and they'll get up on those uh, bridge, you know, bridge pilings and things like that, and they'll suspend off these little flats.
that a fish? That's the biggest one so far today besides the one I hooked on this before. Ate this bait on the fall. Y'all see that? Look at that small one, man. Ate that freaking dark sleeper. That's it right there. It's a little half ounce dark sleeper. Throwing it up on the bank. The two best fish of the day so far. guys and gals now we all know we can't do a downtown Pittsburgh fishing challenge without me trying to catch a smallmouth down at the point in Pittsburgh uh, what a killer picture that'd be with the city behind me killer thumbnail heck I'd probably make it my channel banner but that so happens to be one of the hiccups with me sleeping in today and why that is is most of you Pittsburghers know that the downtown point area slash three river area is a very busy area in the summer even on the weekdays let alone a sporting event or some event downtown going on but on top of all that there's the gateway clipper fleet which is a steamboat tour boat kind of takes you all over the city and one of the key things it does is it pulls right up on the point where there's one grass bed if there was any chance we we're going to catch a fish that's where it was and those boats pull up basically every hour every other hour on the hour and they do this 180 turn on the point which kind of using their pumps and stuff it just completely blows out that grass bed and any type of fish holding at the point so knowing that we still took it out to the point as you guys can see it's beautiful out here we had to throw some baits around and give it a try and just kind of get that killer view of the city but we didn't want to waste too much time out there and eventually we head on to find some more fish to try to beat that kvd three-day bag baby or his third day bag not three-day bag <laughs> but back to the fishing y'all
good here. I know I had one. I know you already did. It. I know you did. But I squandered that. I fucked that up. Big time. As we witnessed me put the bitchin' and bitchin' and bass and bitchin' about the kicker fish we lost two hours ago, what do you know, throw in the dark sleeper again, we get some more bitchin' fuel. Watch this fish follow the bait in. So I pop it, the fish misses it, I let it sink. This fish is aggressive, doesn't, doesn't run off. He follows the bait down, as you can see, and he gets it again. I set the hook and I miss him again. He had the bait for a little bit, but he, he eventually gets off. And what do you know, that's what I get for bitching. So that's where the name comes from, or where it started at least. And that's why you probably see me overreacting too much is because not every hooked fish makes Makes it to the boat so you got to cherish everyone but anyways like i was saying we're just starting to figure out what they're biting i was throwing the dark sleeper there because early on i noticed that the the better fish the best fish in the tank right now and the best fish we had hooked both came on the dark sleeper that fish didn't look too big but he would have been a better fish than the ones i got in there they're all kind of line burners and stuff uh besides the one i caught on the dark sleeper before it's like 14 inches but anyways we know they're biting the dark sleeper, the crankbait's working, and the wacky rig. Uh, the wacky rig's working real good around these skinny grass beds, kind of, the, they're, uh, there's grass patches everywhere, but there's these long skinny ones, and there's like uh, like these patches like where there's no grass in between, and I've, that's where I've been catching some of these fish, like on the wacky rig, is right in the little gaps in the grass. It's only by the skinny grass ones, that's what I noticed at this point, and then the crankbait's working real good around the bridges, and anywhere there's like hard cover um they're they're kind of cr crushing the crankbait so but i'm stubborn and i want to keep throwing that freaking uh dark sleeper yeah. Yeah. so but and i still throw it here and there but the crankbait i would say was the all-star followed by the wacky rig now we just need the dark sleeper or any of these baits to catch another kicker we need to get lucky we need to hope karma helps us out we can get another kicker so we can really seal the deal and take kvd in the freaking pittsburgh classic challenge or the bass man I, who knows what we're calling it i'm just trying to take down kvd let's do it for the 412 bnb back to the fishing got about an hour and a half left a little less and the last chesty battery went out but no worries we got the back camera going and we got four keep actually wait hold up it's too quiet right, let's see what we got no no use that one that's hard but no we did that one all right here we go here we go 
All right, much better. Now, like I was saying, we got four keepers in the well. We just need one more to have a full bag. I think we can take KVD. I would like to call one more. There's a line burner in there. They're all line burners, but there's one in there that's like barely touching. If we can catch two more good ones and call that one out, boy, KVD is going down. And on top of the freaking pattern, we know the crankbait is doing work, especially around bitch pilings. I've noticed on that last rockfish and the, the smallie before it, Unfortunately, there's a ton of trash in the rivers. I wish it was less. It's a lot less than it was back then, but it also kind of helps in a way because it kind of shows these little mini current breaks from these, these out drains, all these like stuff that drains in and there's this underwater structure that would cause a little, little, little uh, change of current or a current break. And you know, you guys know that freaking smallies love a current break. So it's hard to tell on there, but a lot of these times where I'm catching these, a lot of times they were short ones, but I'm casting right beyond a little trash pile, just more than a couple pieces of trash balled together because there's like a little, you know, current break. And that would kind of just key me in like, all right, boom. So that helped a ton. And so we're gonna put that to use. We got about, like I said, less than an hour and a half left. We're gonna put the crank in our hands and go to work. Let's see if we can bring the trophy back, y'all. Let's get it. That little fatty of a walleye, I'm going to take that as a sign to head to the freaking dock because, man, I, I definitely didn't think we would catch two, but definitely to catch one good freaking keeper and to call that one I wanted to call out, KVD is going down, baby. It is over with, baby. Bring that 2005 trophy. I already know where I'm going to put. You know what? Let me stop. Let's. We're gonna, I'm going to meet y'all at the dock. We're going to do the weigh-in, and we're going to see how much I beat KVD by. Let's hope I did. I mean, I'm pretty sure I did, but that would be funny if I didn't, right? <laughs> All right, let's hit it. I'll see you at the wing. All right, BNB fam, it's that time to take the trophy from the legend, hopefully. The weight to beat is 4 pounds, 13 ounces. That was his winning day bag, and I think I got it. Uh, I wanted to use the original audio, I even tried editing it, as you guys see that sweet boat it was getting ready to go out and it was just like too much other noise, it would have sounded like crap, so we'll just do it this way, it seems to be fine, but yeah guys, let's get to the way in. Also, really quick before we start, that's why that, that fish we lost, that three and a half, possibly four pound smallmouth, yeah. especially in the river in the dead heat of summer, that's why that was so important, that possibly could have doubled our weight, but... Whew, even though we're so salty about it, we're gonna keep pressing on. Let's see what these fish weigh. All right, guys, we're gonna start out with big fish. I know it's not a big fish, but the big fish in our group that started out today, our big fish was 1.4. 
That's right, baby. Our big fish today goes 1.4 pounds. Big fish for that tournament, mind you, was 2 pounds, 14 ounces. So, not to bring it up again again, that other fish would have got his big fish of the freaking 2005 Classic. But, uh, it's neither here nor there. <laughs> Alright, fish number 2 comes in at barely a pound, guys. So, we got 1.4 and a pound. Fish number 3 comes in at just over a pound at 1.1 pounds guys all right guys we're, we're on track to get it we're just we're about three and a half pounds exactly and we don't need much more we got two fish to go baby let's get it all right fish number four is our almost big fish and that is 1.2 pounds guys that's right we got uh, fish number four coming in at 1.2 and that kind of puts us like maybe a couple ounces shy of KVD's weight in this last fish. That's why that fifth fish was so key. And we had a, a chance to call because the, the fish we called, guys, wasn't even a pound. It was like 0.92. Uh, we only, I mean, it only helped us a couple ounces, but that was like the guarantee. Like I wanted to make sure each fish was at least a pound. And that's what fish number five came out to, guys. Fish number five comes in at a pound exactly, making our final weight. 5.7 pounds or that comes out to roughly five pounds six ounces so we didn't beat them by much about a half a pound a little more but that's right baby bitchin and bassman has brought home the 2005 bassmaster classic challenge on the bnb channel that's right baby reigning champ sorry kvd i know you're gonna miss that trophy so we're definitely gonna have to get on the line with a secretary or something because we, we need that piece in the in the b and headquarters for sure. All right, b and fam. Welcome back to the b and headquarters. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. I put a ton of time and energy into that video. What a freaking joy it was to fish downtown Pittsburgh and shoot a video down there. Not to mention the same waters as what I believe to be the best classic, the 2005 classic, just because of all the challenges that they they had. You guys know the summer in Pittsburgh is not peak fishing, especially on the rivers. But as you guys know, we got it done. That's right. We were able to overcome and beat KVD's winning day bag we didn't beat his whole weight but to beat the, like his best bag of the tournament and we beat that we could have really crushed it as you guys saw man i'm still sweating that fish but what an awesome feat guys that's right five pounds six ounces about and was all more than enough to beat kevin's i think it was four pounds 13 ounces which is crazy that's like one of his his wins but that tells you how much of a challenge that 2005 classic if you guys haven't seen it even there's like a 30 minute youtube video that kind of encompasses it pretty quick go check that out i mean it was a crazy classic guys i mean as you guys see from what i put in the video but not to mention let's let's see the baits one more time let's check out the baits that got us the win that's right the main bait that really got us the win was this white one, this Yozuri mid-diving crankbait. I got another color here for you guys just to kind of show you. But yeah, guys, this crankbait works really well in the rivers. I mean, it works well everywhere, but the bill, it gets down really quick. It swims great, and it just has that perfect little fat head guppy shad. Just little bait fish uh, profile, different from most. It's got that little fat belly, which when you guys go by minnows, you know what they look like. They damn near look just like that. So that was definitely... Definitely the main bait that caught us most of the fish and you guys know it the dark sleeper it would have caught us the biggest fish I think it still did because I caught another one on it but this was definitely the bigger small mouse candy uh, I wish I would have thrown it more gave it a little bit more patience but from losing that three and a half four pound which is a huge summer river fish uh, it was just <laughs> Even throwing it just kind of reminded me about it. So that's kind of why we stuck to the freaking crankbaits, guys. So that's definitely what got it done. Make sure you guys check these out. Throw these down the rivers or wherever you guys fish. Definitely great smallmouth baits. But yeah, guys, make sure you check out those baits. As for the win in my trophy, we made plenty of calls over to KVD his team or whoever picks up the phone over there because whoever they were they thought i was a crazy person some schizo but i told them i, I won fair and square it was the 05 classic challenge everything was above board i want my trophy so i didn't get any type of response i left messages nothing till a couple of days ago y'all this showed up in the mail bam 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 
They did send your boy a trophy. Now, it isn't his classic trophy, and it's kind of a busted down, broken trophy, but it's a trophy. And I'm pretty sure he sent it as an insult, trying to say maybe it was a fluke or something. Maybe I couldn't do it again. So, got me thinking. This July, we're going to do the second annual BNB 05 Classic Challenge. And I'm inviting y'all and KBD. Y'all want to come at the king? Y'all think you can beat my five pounds, six ounces? That would have been the biggest bag of the tournament. So, I mean, I'm the champion. So, if you all can try to come at the king, this is my, my call out to all of you anglers out there, including you, KVD. Try to come at my five pounds, six ounces. We're going to run it back again. So, if you guys got anything that floats or you have any way to fish the rivers, we'll figure it out. And we're going to do the BB05 Classic. We'll try to record as much as we can and we'll see if anybody can top the now championship five pound six ounce record that's right let's get it y'all hopefully if that interests y'all guys get in the comments let me know we'll start a, a group thread or something like that or a chat we'll get everything squared away and we'll do another banger video this summer obviously it's got to take place mid to end of june july whatnot but we'll get into that later as for my BNB fam and y'all watching this video, make sure you like the video if you liked it. And make sure you subscribe. Let's grow the channel. I love making content for y'all. Hopefully it's not as a big break between the next video. This one was just special to me and I wanted to spend a ton of time. Not to mention we're doing a lot else. Like Beatrice is getting a whole new makeover. Sneak peeks coming on the way. I'm talking like we have almost two grand into this upgrade already. So can't wait to show you that guys. Make sure you come back. Like I said, subscribe. I love y'all. We out. B&B.